It's not tea time yet. Pops is beginning to realise that his stories are like the fragments that remained after the feeding of the 5,000. They are not the main meal, but what was left over after everyone had eaten and were full. All through the centuries, God has been doing wonderful and marvellous miracles for his children. Mighty things that have changed the course of a nation's history. And when sometimes Pops writes those things that he has seen God do for him, he feels that they are indeed just little fragments. However, he was encouraged this morning when he read again John's account of the great miracles, miracle feast. When everyone was full, Jesus told his disciples to gather up the fragments so nothing was lost. Then later on, when Jesus warns the disciples of the hypocrisy of the religious rulers and likens it to bread that is puffed up, the disciples totally misunderstand when what he is saying and became worried because they had forgot to bring bread with them. He had to remind them of the fragments left over from the great feast. So even the fragments are important and Pops doesn't want any of the things God has done for Nana, himself and his family and friends to be lost. The kids are going to be home from school and there is absolutely nothing in the house to feed them with. And I mean nothing. All I have got is a couple of pennies in my purse. What are we going to do, Dave? Pops, who has prob probably used the last of the money on a bag of cement, he was in the middle of making the meeting room bigger, a brick in one hand and a trowel in the other, shouts back to Nana, It's not tea time yet. Oh, OK, replies Nana. What a wife. Ten minutes later, there's a knock on the door. Nana goes to see who it is, and there on the doorstep is a huge box of groceries, enough to satisfy the hunger of even the oranges. Many times after that, when there was no food or no money, Nana would say to herself, it's not tea time yet. And before the next meal was due, God would have shown his hand providing in the most incredible ways. Maybe a £20 note left on the fireplace, being treated to fish and chips, someone putting a five or ten pound note in Pops or Nana's pocket without them noticing, and always when it seemed there would be nothing for Nana to put on the table, and there was usually guests at that table too. A friend of Pops who had been a missionary in Kenya for many years was speaking to a conference on the subject of believing prayer. In her teaching, she was explaining how God can sometimes give us a vision or a dream to indicate how we should pray. She was describing how in a vision, while she was praying, she saw a family sitting round the table but no food on the table. She described the table, the family and the room. She took it that they, she must pray for God to provide for that family. While she was praying, she saw in the vision the kitchen door open and a hand appear putting loads of food on the table. She concluded that God had answered her prayer and thanked him. Years later, she was speaking at a conference and retelling her dream. When she had finished speaking, a young Russian woman came up to her and told her that the scene she described was the exact description of her family's kitchen and that while her father was saying grace, although there was no food, a hand opened the kitchen door just as she described and covered the table with food. This is our Heavenly Father who gives us our daily bread. Another friend of Pops, an evangelist, had been speaking all day to people on the street concerning their souls. He was on his way home, but knowing there was nothing in his flat to eat and no money in his pocket, not all evangelists fly about in private jets, the Lord said to him, Why not go and treat yourself to a meal in a restaurant? The evangelist said, I have no money. The Lord said, Here is a nice restaurant, go and sit down in there. The evangelist, although a little nervous, obeyed. He sat down and then the Lord said, Don't you say grace before a meal? So with hands together and a bowed head, he thanked the Lord for what he was about to receive. As soon as Pops's friend had finished praying, the restaurant owner came over to him and said he could have anything he liked off the menu. He said, A long time ago, I vowed to God if anyone came into my restaurant and said grace, I would give them the best meal I could produce. You are the first person to say grace in my restaurant. What would you like? Of all cheerful givers, God is the best, the very best. Jesus said, do not worry. 
Your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things.